Hi, Word Balloon listeners. I'm Margaret Larkin, who John has interviewed for this podcast. I lived in Japan and I love Japanese language and I want to share a tip for learning it. The language in manga and anime, especially stories that take place in schools, is usually very casual, but Japan is a polite culture, so memorize polite phrases when you go to Japan. For instance, use deska when asking directions, such as eki wa doko desu ka, or use arimasu ka when asking biru wa arimasu ka, and don't say anata when you're talking to someone. You can find me on YouTube at Margaret Larkin. That's Margaret Larkin on YouTube. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. I am uh, happy to uh, represent a fantastic conversation I had with Jock and Will Dennis. Uh, this was uh, in conjunction with the Art of Jock book that Mondo put out a couple of years ago. It was my first conversation with Jock. And I figured with uh, uh, releasing uh, my Andy Diggle conversation, it'd be a great time to uh, revisit uh, this great conversation with Jock and Will, uh, not only talking about the Vertigo days, but also in anticipation of the Eisner nominations coming up uh, in San Diego. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let's take you back to that first conversation with Jock and Will Dennis on Word Balloon. It's been called one of the top three real Comic-Cons in the USA. August 16th through the 18th, Discover Terrificon as it returns to the Mohegan Sun Expo Center in Uncasville, Connecticut. Terrificon showrunner Mitch Halleck has assembled his biggest and best comic creator guest list to date. Jim Lee, Scotty Young, Mark Wade, Adam Hughes, Jason Aaron, Charles Soule, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, Brian Azzarello, alongside legends like Chris Claremont, Jerry Ordway, Howard Chaikin, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, Louise and Walter Simonson, Klaus Jansen, Lee Weeks, and dozens more. Terrificon also brings you the actors who have brought your favorite superheroes to life on the big and small screens. Michael Rooker, Charlie Cox, Star Trek actors Walter Koenig, Nana Visitor, Armin Shimmerman, Ethan Peck, Celia Rose Gooding, and many more. That's Terrificon, August 16th through the 18th. For information on tickets and guests, visit Terrificon.com. Word Balloon is brought to you by AlexRossArt.com. Alex is a good friend of the show, and uh, I am uh, honored that uh, he aligns himself with Word Balloon and uh, Good Lord. We all love his iconic art, uh, whether it's for DC, Marvel, things like Monty Python, The Monkees, David Bowie, so many other great uh, licensed things, The Beatles. Uh, if you go to alexrossart.com, you will find great value for your dollar, whether you can uh, spring for uh, something like uh, original cover art or uh, pages to lithos and posters, every price point you can imagine, you will find something and a beautiful image from alexrossart.com. Word Balloon is also presented by my listeners, the League of Word Balloon listeners. Uh, the help that I get via contributions from Patreon, patreon.com slash Word Balloon. You hear the entertainment that I provide from Word Balloon every day, that I do a new episode. Uh, I am very fortunate to have the, uh, the great creators of comics and pop culture uh, willing to come on and give you great entertainment. I hope you will consider making an actual cash contribution via Patreon, uh, even a dollar a month. But uh, really, if, if Word Balloon is worth the price of a comic book a month to you, uh, it would be greatly appreciated if you slide that extra money you would put on an issue of a comic book to Word Balloon via Patreon. Patreon.com slash Word Balloon. Thank you, League of Word Balloon listeners. Welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here, really excited about today's show because uh, finally, after many years of uh, hoping to talk to this guy and meeting him at a comic book convention, I finally have the opportunity to talk with the wonderful artist Mark Simpson, who we all know as Jock. Uh, this is an amazing artist from England. If you're not aware of his work, let me rattle off some uh, wonderful uh, credits that, to his name. He and Andy Diggle, back in the day, uh, co-created The Losers for Vertigo. What an incredible run. They also did a great Green Arrow Year One, uh, whose influence you can see on the television show. Uh, he and Scott Snyder and Francesco Francavilla all did the wonderful book Batman the Black Mirror, an amazing story about uh, Dick Grayson taking over the Batman role. Bruce Wayne's not even in this story, if you don't remember. Dead, but uh, or presumed dead. And uh, Dick has taken over the role and has to face uh, the son of uh, James Gordon Jr. 
And what an incredible book, both artistically and uh, story-wise. Uh, really, uh, you know, the three, the three of them really just made something exceptional. Uh, he and Scott Snyder have gone on to uh, co-create Witches uh, from Image Comics. In fact, uh, they're getting back to Volume 2 uh, in the months ahead, which is great. And uh, Jock on his own uh, even did a Savage Wolverine story for Marvel. And, uh, you know, uh, we also talk about his uh, conceptual artwork for films uh, like Dread and Ex Machina, all represented in this book, The Art of Jock. Will Dennis does the text for the book. And by the way, he's on this interview as well. And it's great to welcome Will back. Uh, Will, of course, was uh, Jock's editor for uh, The Losers and also on, uh, you know, Scalped. He got Jock to do covers for uh, that wonderful series from uh, Jason Aaron and uh, R.M. Guerra. So uh, it's it's a great opportunity to talk to these guys about this wonderful book, but also about Jock's career on Word Balloon. I have literally been waiting years for this, and I'm so glad uh, to finally have this opportunity. I'm welcoming back Will Dennis to Word Balloon, and uh, very pleased to uh, finally have Jock on a Word Balloon episode. Welcome, guys. Uh, thank you. Hey. Great to hear you both, and uh, congratulations on the new project, The Art of Jock. It's a gorgeous art book and uh, very revealing and uh, answers a lot of questions in terms of where you came from and, and where you are today with uh, with your work, Jock. I, I love the presentation, so congrats on both of you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really, uh, you know, we work with Mondo on this and Insight, and the, the Mondo makes such such beautiful things that, that I knew that at the very least the book was was going to be well put together. But uh, I kind of said all along that, that the only thing that should let it down are basically my drawings. <laughs> <laughs> My writing, you know, followed by oh, oh well, yeah, Closely. yeah. Well, then Will's writing came along and, and uh, <laughs> took it took took it down another notch. Your poster work, Chuck. You've been you've been doing this for Mondo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I met those guys probably about um, maybe five or six years ago. Um, a friend of mine, Oli Moss, was was doing uh, some work with him, and, and he, he introduced us. And uh, I started off doing a, a few small sort of horror movie posters, like Zombie Flesh Eaters and uh, Last House on the Left. Um, and then I got the Dark Knight Rises, and, and been doing you know a bunch of posters since then. Man, I'll tell you, the the movie posters are great. And uh, it's funny, I'm going to ask you about collaborating with Francesco Francavilla later, but I, I really sure. hadn't seen them since the book came out. And uh, they they really are fun and and honestly yeah I've, I've I've seen some stuff like some of the tie-ins to Dark Knight Rises and things like that but yeah the full fledged like movie poster stuff just it, it knocked me out it's it's terrific um, is there oh, a diff go ahead you. yeah and I was just gonna ask no, no, no. yeah I was just gonna ask go is there a different frame of mind doing a movie poster versus say cover art because that's the closest comparison I can think of. Yeah, there is. To be honest, um, there is. I, I remember when, when I first the first couple of posters for Mondo that I did. I mean, you know, they're, they're silk screen prints, so they're kind of like twenty four by thirty six most of the time. They're, they're big posters, and the first couple that I did, I, I handled them more like um, uh, like like I would a comic cover. And then, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't until after then that I actually saw one of these physical prints, and they're so beautiful. You know, they're they're they're, they're not like a like a printed comic cover there because they're silk screen printed you know the ink is much more vibrant it's more like paint really rather than kind of you know, you know the printing that you get in, in published magazines and um uh, and and i realized how that had you know with the size and everything you, you could you could do so much more with them you know there's so much more uh, scope and and depth that you can that you can bring to the image so so yeah they, they are different it, it just means you know I, I can spend a lot more time on them you can give the image a, a lot a lot more time so uh so yeah i've, I've found you know that, that that i do have a, a slightly you know I've, I've, i don't want to say relaxed approach to them but but i, but I do get to spend more time and just you know, noodle with the image much more than i might uh, a, a comic cover which is always you know up against a, a deadline Outside of the forward and the afterward, will you provide the text for the art of Jock? Is uh, in addition to editing it, um, is this your first art of book that you've written? Yeah, definitely. It's the first thing, probably the first thing I've ever written besides emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, Chris Prince, who works at Insight, is was actually like the editor, and I, I thought when they first approached me to do it that I was going to sort of you know, be the sort of editor, wrangler, or whatever. Not that Jack needs a ton of wrangling usually, but they're, you know, he's got a lot going on. And 
Um, yeah, so I thought that was more the thing because for Mike, this Mike Mulcher, who works at 2000 AD, who's a publicity guy there, and um, he had done these amazing interviews, which then we kind of called, you know, most of the stuff is from that. So without like, <clears throat> excuse me, Michael's work, you know, sort of laying the foundation. There, there, you know, there wasn't there wasn't a you know ton of stuff necessarily that I had done before that, but. Um, so I thought I was kind of being bringing on more an editorial standpoint, and then they're like, "Oh no, you got to write this." I was like, "Oh, really? Okay." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just started taking, you know, some of the stuff and trying to figure out, you know, some of Jock's bio stuff and some of my own experiences, and then you know, taking these amazingly in-depth interviews that we had, and you know, figuring out some way to make it tell a story, you know, have some kind of interesting stuff because it's always a fine line. These art books are like. You know, I sort of lean towards more, or, you know, less writing and more art. Um, but then sometimes I've gotten these art books and they're just pictures and captions and nothing else, you know. And you sort of feel like, oh, that's nice, but it just goes on the shelf. But then other times they're just these hideously, you know, sort of in-depth interviews about, you know, whatever the guy had for lunch the same day. He tried to, write, you know, draw this thing and, you know, I don't have to wow my eyes glaze over. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out a way. It was really just trying to find some median ground you know so um yeah so it was interesting i mean I, I, it's weird to have a writer credit and they send you a link to like you have an amazon page with you know no followers which is great <laughs> you know, which is just about right 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 about where i should be probably <laughs> but um yeah it was good and you know i mean the hardest part actually was for me is just sort of figuring out the like i was a big part of a lot of the, the story you know in terms of his you know, coming to DC and development there and all that, but yes. like, I didn't really, I didn't, I tried to keep myself out of it, which was a little sort of an awkward dance to do because I, I didn't really want it to be like, well, then Will had this brilliant idea to hire him to do X, Y, or Z, you know, <laughs> genius, you know, but, um, yeah, so I, that was a little tricky to figure out ways to do it. So anytime you see stuff like Vertigo editorial was a little unsure if Jock was the right guy for this job. <laughs> That's basically me. That's the, you know that's that's a stand-in for you know I wasn't that into it or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> so it's cool. It's exciting. I don't know if I'll do another one or <clears throat> you know, but uh, it was great and you know to be the first and maybe the only one to do it with someone like Jack, who I've known for so long and you know admire so much. I mean, it, you know, it's fantastic. So I should probably just quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> well, this this is the purpose of this conversation. It'll fill in those blanks in terms of, of your participation in the projects and certainly, uh, you know, getting getting Jock to uh, to Vertigo and everything. So let's, uh, Jock, let's start uh, pre-Will and uh, and talk a little bit about your, your comic beginnings um, at 2000 AD. Um, Lenny, you know, first of all, approaching comics in general, I found, I found it interesting that... Um, you you had said you had like reverse engineered looking at a comics page and working it out. Can you can you talk about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, comics drawing sequential pages is pretty much the the hardest thing that I think I do. You know, in in, in my work in life, I think you know, I think it's the kind of skill that you never stop learning you never stop understanding you know visual storytelling more and more you know as 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 the years go by so when you first try and draw a comic you know you're probably thinking about whether you you're able to draw something not not why you're drawing it or or kind of you know the reason that the you know the a b and c is is it is it is in the panels and you know in, in those early days you sort of do something and then yeah and you sort of look at it and you'd realize that the the you know the the clarity of the storytelling or, or, you know, your shot choice or, or this close up is needless or, you know, all, all those little things which go into making, you know, effective pages kind of, uh, you have to work out and, and there's no e easy way of doing it. So, um, you know, I used to, I used to hang out with my good friend Dom Reardon who draws for 2000 AD as well. And, uh, you know, we used to just literally sort of stay up all night, you know, paint some pages, look at comics, just, you know, just, just try and kind of, you know, get, get the nuts and bolts of it kind of un understood a little bit better because you know because that's like i say you know that, that that's the only way you can do it is just by literally delving into it and and it's just something that that you know i, st I still feel like a beginner you know it's it's something that you never you never master you just maybe get a kind of a flavor of of, of how you how you might approach it you know sure 
Lenny Z was your uh, first 2080? Lenny Zero. Lenny Zero, yeah, excuse me. Well, um, yeah, no, no, it's okay. Um, um, well, I, I actually did, did a few Dread stories first, Judge Dread. Uh, who was my favourite character, like as a kid and stuff and, like that? Was you know literally my first job was drawing my, my dream character, which was which was amazing. And then uh, and Andy Diggle was was editor at 2018 at the time, and they were they got um, uh, their 10th anniversary of of of, uh, of the Judge Dread magazine, which is like a monthly companion comic to 2018, was coming up, and and they um, they asked Frank Miller to to do a cover for it. Wow, and, be, uh, and, and uh, which he did, and, and because Frank's rates were a little bit higher, maybe than, than 2008 is, is is normally used to, <laughs> um, and and uh, Andy used uh, used uh, some extra money and uh, to pay Frank, and uh, and then wrote a, a short story for free, which was which was which was Lady Zero, uh, which was kind of set in Judge Dredd's, Dredd's world. Um, uh, so and, and and Frank's cover never actually saw the light of day because one of the other editors who was a little bit uh, I mean he's a lovely guy but he was a, he was he was he was not he was not uh, afraid of letting his you know letting his sharing his opinions with creators and 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 he called Frank up and kind of sort of said what the hell is this and <laughs> and, and, and and Frank said uh, said you know send me back the artwork and never never call me again and put, and put the phone down. <laughs> So, so, so Frank, so, so Frank's cover didn't didn't even. You, you can find that cover online, by the way, if you Google Frank Miller Dread. It, it, I, I actually really like the cover, like because Frank always brings something new, and, and it's a, and Dread's got like needles and axes like stuck in his helmet. It's you know it's kind of it's a you know way more extreme than 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 you know than, than some other stuff. But um, but yeah, but but that was that that was the way that the Lenny Zero came about basically, and the Andy's you know you you know use that kind of opportunity to write something for free and um, and the story just went down really well with with, with readers you know we, uh, Andy left editorial decided to take the jump to being a writer full time and, and and we did uh, I think he did a couple of other things and we did another Lenny Zero and I, I think it's that that then Will saw uh, at, the, at Virgo um, and uh, and you know and, and him and Karen were interested in Andy and then sort of I guess by default uh, I got dragged along as well <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that, Will. What? Yeah. What? What intrigued you about Jack? Yeah, I do everything by default, so you shouldn't feel <laughs> bad about it. The, um, yeah, I mean, so Andy had reached out to me because he he had literally written me a like a snail mail letter that was on two thousand oh, right. stationery. Yeah, that's thing. amazing. Sort of fun to like, ask for another job while you're still at a job. But the uh, it, like Garth Innes had sort of, you know, said, oh, I might be getting this thing from this, you know, character Andy Diggle. So, yeah, I got that and he sent me a bunch of samples and um, so we did a couple of, he did a short thing and then he started pitching stuff for, you know, he had this sort of a spy idea for some, like a, you know, sort of like an Ocean's Eleven spy team. I think it, I can't remember what the original permutation was. I don't think it was Suicide Squad, but it was something like that, you know, something similar to that. Mm Mm-hmm. But, and I had secured a bunch of these titles that, like they said, you could use. You know, like it used to, back and then, you know, they would like this to do DC properties first if we could. Like you know, Russo and Azarella did, did Johnny Double and you know things like that before they did a hundred bullets. So it was a pretty easy. You know, it's a, it was a little easier to get new people in that way. So yeah, so we had this thing, and initially, like he went through the process, got the losers treatment. You know, all all pulled together. DC really liked it. I remember people. Like Bob Wayne, who was head of sales, coming by and saying, "Like this is the kind of stuff you guys should be doing more of." And it was kind of a hard sell to Karen, you know, just the idea because it was a lot more kind of mainstream and action movie-ish than you know they had tended to do in the past. But sure. Um, but I felt like you know it was something a little more commercial, but could still be smart. And I don't know. We didn't really try out any artists other than Jock that I recall. I mean, we talked about different people, but. Andy had sent me some samples that were like painted, like dread covers and stuff, which I think a couple of them might have ended up in the book, but um, which they're cool. But I was like, ah, this isn't really the look. I didn't think I wasn't seeing it in my head, you know, for something. I was seeing something a little slicker, a little more probably Riso s you know. Um, and so initially, I was kind of, you know, wasn't so sure. And then they sent me the Lenny Zero stuff, which was much more frenetic and cool, and you know, almost felt a little. I wouldn't say manga influence, but it had that kind of energy, you know, like the cool, like Akira kind of manga. So 
you know, that seemed cool, but it was like, how are we going to get two guys who no one's ever heard of to launch a new series? Like, that was just like kryptonite to, to the powers that be at DC usually. So, um, yeah, so we, I don't know, I we sort of were hyming and hawing about it, and then didn't, I think Karen, didn't Karen, Karen and Karen Berger and Richard Bruning, her husband, ended up going to Bristol, and I think they yeah. met Jack in person. And at that That's point, right. I had already sort of seeded, like, I had come around to the idea, but it was one of those things, like, how do we, you, know, you always had to, like, pick your spots, right? Like, you, had to, you couldn't go in there on a Monday morning and be like, hey, I want you to sign ten things and approve five artists you never heard of. <laughs> so I was always, like, we're laying in wait for my spot. So that was sort of the thing. It's like, all right, these guys are there, and they can meet up, and, you know, it's almost like it's, like, if, if, it's, if it ends up being her idea or Richard's idea, like, then, you know, it usually was a lot easier to, move stuff down the tracks right because once if Karen was on board with it like it was just a green light like we didn't really you know they had to go through the process but once she kind of put her stamp on it like there wasn't a whole hell of a lot of people there that would tell her you know we're not going to do this you know because she'd earned that obviously over the years so sure um, yeah so then they went to the show and came back and were like oh this guy Jock he's fantastic like you really should hire him I'm like oh my god that's a great idea you really <laughs> So, yeah, so then I gave him, uh, Mike Carey, I think, was, like, he was doing Hellblazer at the time and was nice yeah. enough, like, he, you know, we do fill-ins, and, and mm-hmm. I said, oh, well, there's this, this guy, you probably heard of him, but, you know, could he do an issue just sort of as a tryout? Because, you know, like Jock was saying, I mean, doing tw- doing sequential art is, you know, it's a beast, you know, like, it's really a grind. I mean, no matter how fast and good you are, I mean, maybe you're going to do a page or, you know, so in the day, but, you know, it's, it's a real labor, so... You know, just to see what that was like for him. Like, hey, we need 22 pages and we need them in 30 days or sure. something. So, you know, like, let's see what happens. So, yeah, so, I, you know, I don't know. So, we, yes, yeah, so that was all approved. And Mike Carey wrote this cool script about John running around London. Um, and then I think, didn't you guys, Jock, go up to the town and walk around? Yeah. And stuff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Andy was living there at the time, actually. And, and we literally, so the story was John Constantine you know, running around London, sort of. Uh, well, there's a bit more to it than that, but 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 <laughs> but, but visually, that that's what he was doing. And, and I mean, Andy literally spent the whole day tracing the steps from from the script, go going down all the lanes, all, all the right roads, all the cathedrals, and everything. And, I, and so I could take reference photos, and so I could get it exact exactly right. So uh, yeah, it was it, it, yeah, it was um, it, it was quite an adjustment going straight straight into that. Like Will says, you know, straight into like a black and white monthly book. You know, from, from even from having done quite a few stories at T and AD it's still there's just there's nothing like a, a monthly you know the the, the 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 monthly grind of, of, of drawing comics you know so um so uh, but but that seemed to go pretty well and people seem to seem to like the issue and then we went straight into the losers from there I'll tell you man um it blew my mind first issue uh, right away and that's you know that's the job of the artist is to get people in you know through the front door and your cover and your interiors were so greatly unique. And uh, then, oh, you know... Wow. Wow. thank you, man. Oh, for real, man. No, honestly, and, uh, you know, I'll be bugging Will for uh, for Andy's contact info after this conversation. Yeah. Because, <laughs> honestly, it really, uh, I, I just come back to comics in, in 99. 100 Bullets was its own mind-blowing experience. And, uh, really, you guys, and then, uh, two, uh, Human Target, Peter Milligan and, yeah. uh, and Cliff... Jesus, I mean that. That's and also, and I forget the other artist's name that uh, did. Javier Polito. Th- yeah, Javier Polito. Absolutely, man. Jesus, no, it was great stuff. And that's the thing because I was more into. It was so great to see crime comics, and you know, I would even although this is more uh, heist and espionage and foreign intrigue, I'd kind of you know sure, do- yeah. dovetail that into that. No, that was what I wanted. I didn't want magic. I didn't want supernatural. And uh, that's the thing. You, you know, those three books really fit the bill and it, and it really was exciting uh to see that stuff so no you it really felt like your style was very dynamic i know will in our previous conversation you said that um they kind of had to go back and, and sort of rework that first issue right yeah i mean andy it was longer we were doing 30 page issues first issues then um and andy yeah poor andy i made him write a whole bunch of drafts of that which i didn't usually do i wasn't i don't think notorious for that the way some other people are that you know usually i felt like if we could get it 
you know, in a few takes, so to speak, then, you know, it probably feels a little, a little more fluid, you know, but, um, yeah, he had, like, the first 15 or so pages were all, like, the, the guy recruiting the, the team, you know, like, yeah. there, there were cool scenes, like, you know, like, kind of, he was driving a limo, or he was doing different things, like, recruiting all the team members, which is always a great sequence, like, in a film. Sure. But, you know, in this, it was, like, it was page 16 or 17, and, like, we didn't even have, we hadn't met the whole team, we didn't know what they were up against, we hadn't done anything, we were, like, running out of real estate. So, in, you know, and he kept massaging it, he'd do these drafts, and they were, you know, 5% different, 10% different, whatever, and finally we're, like, you know, like, I don't know, can I swear on this podcast? But Absolutely. Sort of like, you, know, you know, like, fuck this, like, let's just start here, like, the big heist that starts on page 17 or whatever, which ends up being the first pages of the issue, but, like, people can figure it out, like, they're not stupid, you know, like, they can figure it out, and I'd rather they were, you know, confused for five minutes than bored for 25 pages, right, so it's just like, you know, we'll just throw them right into it, and then we'll go from there, and I think, ultimately, I don't even think that those scenes, those scenes were eventually used, but I don't think it was for a couple of years later, you know, where you actually saw how he actually recruited the guys, but yeah, so then we yeah. gave it to Jock, and it just, or go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, I can remember actually Andy said that, that um, well, we, we didn't ever do those scenes properly, we, we, we kind of revisited them a little bit in, in like the second book, you know, like Iron uh-huh. Life or whatever, you know, where right, they all right. came, came into the cinema, and it was almost the same kind of feel, but, the, but those, those original scenes were, 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 never, were never used, and in fact, I think Andy said that uh, literally none of his first draft was in the final draft of of, of, of the losers issue one you know it was it was, it was totally all uh, you know, all, all, all fresh basically but I mean I, I gotta say I mean you know and what is is it's such a good script and 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 these you know twisting and turning sort of you know his sense of storytelling and, and, and action sequences is like you know, for me he's kind of the best at that you know he's he's got such a such a good um Gauge on 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 pace and and, and action beats and uh, yeah yeah the, the, and with the losers as well I was going to say earlier uh, John when you were talking about it and, and uh, thanks for your kind words by the way but we, but we always set out to try and make a comment that you could give to anyone you know you know yes not 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 not, not you know being entrenched in kind of comics continuity or whatever just you know you could literally give it to someone off the street and and, and the hope was that they that they could get it you know they could follow it you know so so that that was kind of uh, our intention with the losers, you know. So, um, so that was nice to hear. Well, that was I think to, this, to this day. I think it's the best number one script I ever worked on. You yeah, know, all the projects yeah. I had. I mean, number one scripts. There's some good ones, you know. Scout number one, I thought was good. And, sure. You know, there's some, but it's like you know, they're all certainly of a really high quality. I think, but like they're hard, right? They're hard to get just yeah. enough to make people want to come back. You don't care about the characters. You don't know. You're not. A, you know, all the things that go into it. It's like a pilot of it series it's rare on tv that the first episode is your favorite episode or something it's almost impossible. yeah exactly I, I think of all the series of all the things i ever worked on it's like the tightest first issue that you know gives you just enough and it gives you the flavor and it gives you the characters and it's sexy and it's fun like i mean I, to this day like and i send it like if people ask me for scripts like sample kind of scripts i'm always like you got you know read this thing because it's sort of you know this weird odd master class on it for, from somebody <laughs> didn't have a lot of pages under his belt at that point you know yeah. so, I mean it's definitely a testament to Andy's ability to write those beats and you know pack it all in there and to, you know to, to have the professionalism to keep tr- trying you know a lot of guys would have yeah. been like fuck you I'm sick of this <laughs> it, you know, it is what it is or you're busting my balls for no reason which I really didn't try to do and I didn't do that I don't think I often did that in my career I certainly didn't try to like you know ask for changes for the sake of changes you know, which sure. is definitely an editorial philosophy that exists, that if you're not asking for changes, you're not doing your job kind of thing. But, sure. uh, you know, that wasn't really my my philosophy, but, yeah, I don't know. So I, I think it, it worked out okay. Well, and as you guys say, um, I did take it to friends who had stopped reading comic books and showed them. And I'm like, look, this is what comics are today. And, again, um, great story, but, yeah, they were knocked out too by your art. And they're like, Man, I don't remember seeing this kind of art in in a comic book. They weren't aware of you know the the guys like um, you know Dave McKean and some of the others that were so interesting from a design and, and art standpoint that you know were the exceptions when they were doing stuff. And I know uh, you know a- a- Andy rattle off some of your inspirations as you approached comics, the the people who came before you. Or I'm sorry, Jesus, Jock. I said Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it was. <laughs> 
Where's Andy? Let's, let's, let's give Diggle a call and get him on board. We're, 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 we're talking about him so much. Let's, just, let's, let's get him in. Um, uh, sorry, Joe, can you repeat the question there? Sorry. Certainly. Uh, no, uh, some of your art inspirations uh, prior oh, to yeah, you getting yeah. started. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... it's you know, I, 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 I loved Vertigo in the, in the 90s, and, and I loved the fully painted stuff. You know, Dave McKean, Dawson Kevich is still a favourite. Um, uh, you know, Kent Williams, I thought was great. You know, um, and what I liked about them is 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 they were painting. And, and before 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 my first uh, published Dread, I, you know, I, I was I was painting comics. I wasn't drawing black and white comics. And it was actually uh, Andy Diggle that phoned me when he was editor of 2018 and said, "Can you do?" 12 pages of black and white dread in, in a month and I just sort of said yeah <laughs> I guess I, I, I guess I can do that um, you know uh, so um, uh, and you know guys like you know, thought Sean Phillips Duncan Fabredo is fantastic Mike Mignolo obviously as well um, you know I, 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 I just liked I liked I liked people with a strong design sense that could draw well and I guess were interesting you know um, uh, that's that's uh, about, you know, and then 2008, with there's so many good, good, you know, artists from 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 when I was growing up that I just, you know, completely kind of changed my my, my outlook on things. People like Mick McMahon, um, he's not so well known in the states, but some of his work for 2008 was just, you know, stunning. And, and 2008, of course, was you kind of you know Steve Dillon's, Brian Bolland, you know, Dave Gibbons. They they all started there. So, sure. So it, it, it was really amazing to, to to get to get that kind of. Um, uh, in introduction then and that level of quality in in the comics that I was reading as, as, as a kid you know because sometimes uh, and uh, I don't mean this in a funny way but sometimes like, American comics can feel more diluted and more kind of you know um, you know like a kind of uh, uh, what's the word it's sort of factory made is it? even though they're not you know but, but, but they, you know they felt more kind of pencil ink colorist you know layout artist you know background you know that they had that element to them whereas 2000 AD was was very kind of it felt very kind of pure and the art and writers and artists working in it felt felt you know like you're really kind of hearing their their voices you know so so that that, that was really inspiring to me and, and I and so I guess when I you know, started trying to do it I just tried to do my own thing you know try you know I, I think I definitely had influences and you could probably see them in, in those early pages more than now but but I just tried to uh, you know try to do my own thing with it because comics are great like that you know they, they can support that and, and that's uh, you know that that's uh, that's a really valuable thing I think and that's a good point about the 2080 because you could flip through that because I used to get it when I worked in a comic shop in the 80s and you could flip yeah. through it and each story was it could be totally different. You know, Absolutely. It's yeah. Black and white, and the next one's painted, the next one's something else. Yep. Yeah, where yeah. comics, you know, yeah, there definitely was like a house style that was pervasive sure. at Marvel or a house style at DC. I mean, even if the artists individually, a lot of them are just like some of my favorite artists or whatever, but it's just like, yeah, you know, you definitely, that it is interesting that it will allow you to sort of just approach it purely like this is what I'm going to try and that they gave you like a, you know, an opportunity to do that, that, you know, which is, thank God, right? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rogue Rogue Trooper with, with Gibbons was totally different from Sinister Dexter. I mean, you know, I, those were two of my favorite uh, 2000 AD, you know, uh, strips and everything. And I'm forgetting who drew uh, Sinister Dexter back then. Uh, probably about a hundred different people. Really? So that's, yes, it's, it's next one was in it like nearly every week. But, uh, Simon Davis, who's, who still paints, okay, uh, did a lot of them. Um, but yeah, loads of different guys drew drew since his extra. Yeah, I get you. People. Well, back to the losers. Um, did it end on its own terms, or did you guys have to, you know, end it sooner than you wanted to? No, no, it totally uh, uh, ended on its own terms. In fact. We ran about issue kind of 24, we did 32 issues, and ran about issue 24, 25. I think Andy even offered, he spoke to Karen and said, you know, do you want me to wrap this up if it isn't selling so well or, or whatever? And she was like, no, no, just do, do you know, do, it's fine. Do, do, do we do what you want to do with it? So so, so uh, the three-year um, storyline was was exactly what we had planned, and, 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 and it finished exactly the way that he intended with that last, you know, I mean, that, that last page, you know, when I, when I read it, you know, uh, Jensen, the, given the bird to, to to another character saying "fuck you, company man," and like it's like the end, and it's just like whoa, that's that's uh, that, that was always his his last page, you know. So no, um, you know, and again to give credit to Will and Virgo and, and DC as well, you know, we were two completely unknowns, and they 
you know, that they sort of let us run with it, you know, and, and um, you know, we, we really didn't know whether, you know, it, it could have been our one and only job, you know, if, if it sure. changed, so that, 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 would, that would have been that, but as it turned out, you know, it's, the losers kind of, I mean, they made a movie out of it, it's, it's kind of, you know, maybe one of those times where, where, where it kind of worked out for DC, you know, they, they probably made more money from the movie than they did from our, our little comic, you know? No, I hear you. <laughs> sure. I'm glad you. I'm glad you mentioned the movie because I like the movie, and it's it's diff, it's slightly different from the, from the book. But I also sure. think the timing of its release kind of made it misunderstood uh, to the audience. And actually, too, I I don't think the movie really got a great benefit from a clear sense of what they had because I think it was. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Talk about it. I, I'll talk about it enough. Well, you you guys talk about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I mean, um, I, I, it's. I mean, the cast was amazing to yeah. start with. Like, like, like I, I couldn't believe the, those guys, and I, I, I sort of felt like we, we benefited from um, uh, from maybe Sin City doing so well because, you know, I, I think Sin City was pretty much just a literal, you know, kind of kind of adaptation, oh, yeah. and, and, and 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 we, we which did very well, and, and the, you know, the way Hollywood works, kind of, I think they saw that working, and they seemed more keen to kind of you know uh, follow at least sort of the visuals of the comic like for example when me and Andy visited the set um, you know obviously I knew like Chris Evans for example was, was playing Jensen and mm-hmm. I, I thought I, I, I thought he'd probably wear little le- round Lennon glasses you know but uh, you know, beyond <laughs> that like who, who knows and then and, and we're on set and we we're chatting to Zoe Saldana who plays Aisha yes and then, and then, and then she looks over our shoulder and just goes Jensen and I turn around and and like you know, Chris walks towards us, and he's got the same facial hair. I mean, it was ridiculous. He, he'd grown these long sideburns, this little goatee beard that that I only put in the comic just just as you know, in whimsy, just to make him kind of visually kind of a bit distinct. And the, and the poor guy had to like grow this ridiculous kind of you know, sort of goatee beard and, and sideburns and wear them for like you know three months. Um, but but to have to have literally a character that 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 you know that. That had only existed, you know. I was going to say in my head, but also on paper. Literally walked towards me and shake my hand was the was the weirdest thing. And, and, <laughs> and, and they re- and, and and they really did, you know. They they looked so the part, and, and and they're all brilliant actors as well, you know. I mean, like tone wise, I, I was I was you know, The Losers isn't exactly Shakespeare, but I was surprised by by, by how light the film was, you know. They, um, I, 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 I think it's funnier than the comic. I think you know. They, Agreed. They, they were, they, yeah, they they they. they you know, they had a great time on set. They they all got on really, really well. And, and those moments of kind of that love, that sort of vibe between them, I, I think, are some of the strongest bits of the uh, of the film. Um, but and, and you know, and lots of the action sequences were the same. But they but they kind of happened for different reasons in the, in, in the in the film. You know, like the, it, it was almost like the connecting tissue was changed. You know, like Will said about that first scene in the comic where it literally dives right in. That that that, that sequence is in the movie. And I would love to see a cut of, of the movie where, where where it starts with that and, ju- and just throws you straight in, you know, um, as opposed to kind of, you know, the, 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 I think they put the flashback at the beginning so you get the setup of, of all the characters, um, you know. But uh, I mean, you know, listen, it's, it, it's amazing that it got made. You know, I'm, I'm I'm still proud of the comic, and 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 you know. You know, the movie didn't really do what I think sort of they were hoping for it, it to do, but you know, but it's it's still amazing to me that, that, that it exists, you know, and, that, and that's great. I think it's a fun movie, I really do, and I do think that, yeah. you know, ultimately it's going to be one of those cult movies that people who see it will discover it and appreciate it for what it is, and, and not the comparisons that I think the market were kind of dictating as it was released, you know, on uh, in the theaters and stuff, but uh, that's all right, like you said, no, the book is a classic, and... Um, I have a feeling, I, I don't even, and certainly the two of you, well, you know, Will's out of the vertigo circle, and, uh, you know, you'll know Jack whenever they decide to do another reprint of it, but I just had a panel with all the 100 Bullets creators, and that's the thing, I think I think as 100 Bullets and Scalped and some of the better vertigo projects, this thing's going to be around for a long time, so... Nice going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's not a question. It's more a statement. But, yeah, you know. So, uh, no, way to go. Well, moving on to, uh, you know, you got you guys continue and you do Green Arrow year one. And, um, you know, now there's there you're stepping into a reboot of, a, of an established character. And as far as design, because certainly there were a lot of different designs to choose from. 
uh, you know, uh, Mike Rell's run and uh, certainly yeah. the the classic and Neil Adams reboot of the 70s and stuff. What were your thoughts as yeah. you were approaching this project? Well, um, again, funny enough, it was, it was, you know, it was, a, it was, we kind of, we could, uh, what's the best way to describe it? Like, like, cause Green Area 1 was really, we got to Moon Andy, somehow kind of managed to shoehorn just the kind of, the kind of thing, the kind of storytelling that we do. We tr- we just managed to shoehorn it into a mainstream DC book because the, the only thing we had to worry about was get, was on the very last page. He had to look like the Green Arrow and be kind of crouched over Star City and, you know, it says like, you know, you know, hey, I'm the Green Arrow now, you know? Like that was the only bit. That was True. the only thing <laughs> that, that, that we had to kind of like, you know, worry about, like continuity-wise or anything. We could literally just, just tell our own type of story, which was at the time, it was, you know, hopefully a kind of fairly sort of fast-paced, you know, gripping action tale, you know? And, sure. And, 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 and you know, we, we, we did follow... You know the, the kind of the ABCs of his origin story with you know being shipwrecked on the island and all that kind of stuff. But um, but yeah, but visually it, it was uh, which is something that I've kind of uh, stuck with even through a lot of the film work that I've done as well. It was kind of his his costume. It was kind of um, function over form. You know, it's like, like and then Andy wrote this brilliant line when when, uh, when you first see him in a hood and he just says, you know, that, that, that it's just to keep the sun off. You understand? And it's it's the it's that really clever way of grounding something and making it kind of believable but giving you the kind of iconography of, of, a, of a recognized character you know that, that that was a really that was really exciting to do you know and even though he's in kind of like you know cargo shorts and a vest he's, he's kind of got this this hood and then you know and then suddenly that there's the there's the green arrow you know just like if you put two you know two black ears on a on, on a black head you've got batman kind of so <laughs> so so it, it, it yeah it was just about trying to um play with, with with that iconography that everyone knows of, of Green Arrow but but yeah but at its heart we just we just got to do a kind of gritty action tale you know so yeah it was it was great and again people seem to really like it which was a really nice thing and um I've, I've just got a letter from DC actually saying that apparently there's quite a lot of it in season four of Arrow which I've not actually seen so I should uh, I should check it out I was wondering if Wait, have you seen any of the television show or no uh, I haven't. No. Oh, it's <laughs> true. No. no worries. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's crazy. It's crazy because I mean, you would think I would have because um, we, we didn't even realise that the 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 uh, our, our story was it, you know was kind of an influence on the on the on the TV series. Definitely. But, um, uh, um, I haven't is the short answer, which seems crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but my my kids are huge fans of it, and they were talking to me one day about. Oh, he's on this island, and all this stuff happens, and they're referencing. There's some character giggle on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, and they're like yeah. throwing that around like at the kitchen table, and I was like, "Hold on a second, fellas." Yeah, what the hell are you just back, about? just back up, back up a little bit, and they filmed me in. I'm like, "Oh, that's interesting. Let me introduce you to this over here." You know. But yeah, they yeah, love it. The, uh, John Diggle, the character, is, is named after Andy, but in real life, Andy's brother is called John, so they've named it after, uh, without realizing it, they've named it after Andy's, Andy's brother. <laughs> <laughs> and and forgive me, Will, did you did you edit your one? No. no okay, I didn't think yeah. so, and that's why you know. But that's no. It's okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on then and it go. It would have been a lot better if I had. <laughs> did read it at the time which was rare for me because i didn't read any of the stuff that was rarely ever coming out from from the dcu but, no uh, yeah you know i was proud it was like my guys were going off to like you know do something with like the big kids table like it was definitely <laughs> cool you know sure and it's, it's it's so much more readable than the majority of superhero comics even to this day so you know i mean i like those sort of contained self-contained things and but yeah you know, no, it was it, it. I well, that's uh, certainly it was your you and you and Andy together that made me want to read it again because I had already you know I mean not, I mean I, I'm a huge Green Arrow fan and I had uh, I forget who did the the kind of modern like putting him on the island original story, um, but I but, it, it was sorry no it, 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 it was there was like a there was a there was a strip in like the 60s or something like that yeah. where, where he was on, where he was on the island but but, the, but the, 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 there was a modern one as well I, I, I can't remember uh, who wrote it either to be honest um, but but yeah the, the, there was a kind of 
a retelling of the origin. But again, we just like you know we just kind of took took the bare bones and and sure. and, and, and ran with it kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, a, there's a cool section in the art book that's got like Green Arrow. There's like pencils and inks and like that. There's, that's the section, right, Jack? With like the yeah, the, yeah, the we, overlays we, and stuff. The yeah. We, 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 we put um, a few acetates and some overlays and things in the art book and, and, and one of them is uh, there's a green area one page and it's got like a vellum overlay with, with my layout over the top and you can kind of lift it and see the final art underneath so uh, yeah you know we, 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 we sort of tried to you know make the book kind of kind of um, you know, appealing not not just to maybe fans of mine, you know, to try and make it just just the, you know as good an, an art book as we could. So uh, yeah, you know, and it was really cool that they were able to do that. You know, there's a few good game folds and bits and pieces and extras. Because like, like Will said, sorry to suddenly jump back on on, on the art book, but Certainly. it's interesting something something Will said earlier, like um, how lots of art books they are literally just images, and and uh, I've, I feel the same way. Like I've got a few art books by people that I really like. You know, I really love it. You pick it up. And kind of flick through it and you go yeah okay yeah that's great and it literally goes on the shelf so we really try to 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 you know put a bit more into this one you know to make it a bit more kind of interesting you know not just my shitty drawings kind of thing (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's definitely like process stuff and behind the scenes kind of stuff and you know trying to balance and i mean for me it was important to try to get in there like you know what what's like the work that it takes to do it and the time that it takes to do it and the process that it is that it's not just oh you know he's a genius and this stuff just comes out fully formed you know like it's it's just it's long long hours sitting there trying to come up with these things and and you know he makes it look very kind of effortless at the end but it certainly isn't like during the process you know so I think you know to try to show a little of that I mean Insight was great about doing some of these extra things that you know cost money and sure to prop I'm sure and all that yeah. it's definitely I think it's definitely for fans you know are going to be like oh shit this is really I mean the people who've seen it like when they see the acetate of like the there's a Batman you know cover and uh, you know so you know it's just like wow this is worth the price of admission kind of stuff you know which yeah I mean I, I, I'm, I think we're both really happy with how that all came out for sure oh that's great guys because honestly um, Will was kind enough to send me a PDF of the book and it is great to hear that that kind of uh, process stuff that you can actually, you know, touch and feel is part of it. Because again, I, I just came back from the Cincinnati uh, Cincy Comic Con, and guys like yeah. Jim Rugg, the artist, was talking right, right. about, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, he's including a lot of process stuff uh, that he sells at tables and and makes available to his fans. And I know too, from a writing standpoint. Uh, that's what some people appreciate about the, my podcast and some of my interviews because the writers really go into writing process and stuff. So, yeah, it, it absolutely is more distinct to have that in your art book than the average art book that, as you say, is just text and drawings. So, very yeah, cool. It, it definitely took me back, too, to like, you know, I used to actually get the art boards, right? I mean, they would send sure. in the pencils and I'd have to send them to an inker or and they'd letter right on the board or I'd get the final, you know, we'd wait every morning for this FedEx delivery that came around, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, we, they'd literally on a cart come and hand you like a stack of pages and I'd have a stack of, you know, jock pages, reso pages, like a painted cover from somebody, you know, like it was, like to physically hold these objects in your hand was like a thrill every morning, you know, so I think the book does a nice job of sort of conveying a little bit of that sense of, just how hands-on it is or you know probably was more in the past but you know that, that there's still at some point like you got to sit there and do this and create this thing out of nothing and that you can actually hold it in your hands you know like i missed that part of the process for sure so pretty neat. It was cool that they were able to put that in there you know really cool yeah now we mentioned batman and i got to ask about dark mirror because what an interesting I, everything about that and will did you did you edit that no, I, I remember at the beginning, like when they were trying to cook up a lot of the stuff before that, and you know, I had helped get Scott into the Vertigo with you know my assistant Mark Doyle had sort of found him and got them, and you know they had struggled for a long time to get that American Vampire thing off the ground, and then they finally came to me and we're like, well, what can we do to get this to happen? And you know, so we sort of, you know, I, I was somewhat instrumental, I think, in trying to you know finally getting that over the goal line, you know, they've done most work. So, yeah, so, you know, I remember, like, when they first started talking about this and doing that sort of stuff, and 
you know, I'm pretty territorial about the guys I've worked with, so, you know, I still consider Jock, like, oh, he was, like, kind of one of my guys, you know. Sure. Like, oh, I, 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 Will, I, I'm, t- I'm totally one of your guys, just so you know. There's no, there's no, there's no way that any other editor is, is, is claiming me, no way. So, you know, so, yeah, so, no, I wasn't, but, you know, it's, again, it's thrilling to see, it's, you know, see these people, you know, people that you sort of work with really closely, like, go on to these, like, amazing, like, high profile things you know and knowing that they're going to deliver the goods too which is always nice you know excellent but, well, well I've, I've spoken to Francesco and I've, and I've and I've spoken to Scott about Black Mary so finally the, the missing piece tell me about because really uh, for people who don't remember there are so many levels to Dark Mirror I mean the the way you guys did the storytelling Black Mirror, Black Mirror. pardon me B- B- Black Mirror excuse me yeah uh, because no, no. yeah it's it's such a great story 11 issues in Detective Comics, uh, Batman is missing because of Infinite or Final Crisis. So it's Dick Grayson as Robin. You've got James Gordon's son. You've got the Joker. And these two different stories, the Joker story and the James Gordon Jr. story, uh, colliding uh, ultimately yeah. and stuff. Uh, no, it's and again, uh, uh, Dick Grayson as as Batman having to solve you know solve this case and and you know unsure of himself in the role. So that's that's the character standpoint. Um, first, uh, well, uh, first of all, yeah, tell me, talk to me, Jack, about how they presented this to you. Yeah, well, um, uh, well, originally, actually, Scott just phoned me uh, totally out of the blue. Um, uh, it was, I think, on like a Friday before going to Comic Con. Uh, what year would that be? Maybe. Damn, what year did it come out? Maybe 2011, maybe something like that. Something like that. Uh, 2012, something like that. Um, and yeah, and he just called me uh, out of the blue, and um, and uh, the Losers movie had just come out actually. So, so well, no, this would have been 2010 then, in, in, in that case. And um, and uh, me and Andy were keen to do Snapshot, which, which was another kind of creator own thing we had um, with the Losers movie having having just come out. You know, it kind of made it made a lot of sense. Um, and uh, so, even though it was, uh, and and Scott called to talk about Batman, it was definitely really, really cool to be kind of you know considered uh, as an artist on for for, for, for detective. Um, I wasn't necessarily looking for a company book at, at that point, and I, I don't mean to sound blasé about it, but you know, I I, I was keen to 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 do some more uh, creator own stuff. Sure. Um, but there was. I, I don't know. I, I just had a really good feeling about Scott. You know, I, you know, almost like that kind of. You know, I had a, a kind of, you know, instinctual kind of in, in my belly feel like talking to him. I, I, I just, I, I just have a good feeling about it. And, and uh, we hung up. You know, I said, let, well, let, let's meet in San Diego and, and ch- chat about it properly, kind of thing. And then, then we met up. Um, I think Scott mentions it in, in the, in the he, he wrote an afterward for the, for the book actually. Yes. You can, you, you can read it there. But um, yeah, he. You know, he, he, what, as soon as he told me that it was James Gordon's son, you know that that baby that fell off the bridge in, in, at the end of Batman Year One, I was just like, "That's great!" You know, like, well, why, why has that not been done? Sure. And um, and and you know, the, the the whole the whole experience working with Francesco, the editorial as well, like it, it was such, it was a really, you know, a, a really nice time. <laughs> like, the, 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 there's no other way of putting it. It was like everyone sent everyone else everything they did you know like it's often when you work as part of a team you know someone will have a back and forth with just the writer or just the writer or the other artists will send something to the editor and i don't get to see it or whatever sure but with, but with black mirror black mirror everyone sent every everything to, to everyone else and, and and it was a real you know it, it just seemed like a really um it was a great team it was really enjoyable to work on and and what, what was really cool about it as well was you know really i mean scott had done american vampire but really this was just a just a random, you know, detective story, uh, detective comics run, you know, um, um, there, there wasn't really anything that was going to set it apart from, from anything else, but, but I don't know, there was maybe a little bit of alchemy or whatever you want, you want to call it. And, 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 you know, I mean, Scott has obviously gone on, I mean, you know, to prove himself as one of the finest writers we've got, you know, and, 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 and he showed it, you know, straight out of the gate on, on Black Mirror. It was, it, it just felt like, a, like, you know, I don't want to sound too kind of, you know, sort of fanciful, but it was, it, it felt like a slightly magical time. We were all just kind of, you know, similar to maybe doing the losers. We were just sort of hungry for it, you know, and Scott was obviously keen to, to, to do what he wanted to do with Batman. And even, even, even it being Dick Grayson, which, you know, when I first, when he first told me it was going to be Dick, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought, do you know what, if, it, if I'm doing 
if you know if I'm doing a, a Batman a, a reasonably uh, sized Batman tale I kind of want it to be Bruce Wayne but Scott did such a good job of, of, of handling you know Dick Grayson in the role and that became an integral part of the tone and, and the feel of the story and the way that I drew drew him you know I drew him differently to how you might draw Bruce Wayne in the yes. role. so the, the, so the whole thing just I don't know it just kind of it just kind of worked and, and and then to get the kind of response that the, 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 the we've got just from again from that sort of random you know you know, one random Batman tale is is was amazing. You know, and 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 I, I, I you know, I'm so glad that 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 Scott called me out, out of the blue. You know, because obviously, you know, we're still working together now. I'm doing an issue of Batman with him, All Star Batman with him now, and, and obviously we do Witches together as well. Yes, which we're about to which we're about to start. So, you know, just just one of those moments that I guess you know where where it kind of like you know a, a, a piece of the puzzle sort of fell into place, and and um, you know, yeah, it, yeah, it was just a really really uh, great thing to work on. Well, that was the thing it, with the physicality of Dick Grayson being different than than yeah. uh, Bruce Wayne as Batman. I've talked about this with other artists, Jeremy Hahn, uh, for one, yep. that you know did a did a detective run with uh, with Dick as as Batman. And that's the thing. You're right. It could be like uh, uh, Thunderstrike as Thor kind of things in the '90s, where it's not you know the real Thor and stuff like that. But it but it really yeah. it became more interesting. First of all, because of Dick's relationship with Bruce over the years, and that he finally has to step into the shoes that he's never really wanted to do, and then two that you've got so you've got Batman's son, and you know you literally have uh, Gordon's son, and 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 the Joker, and so these three random elements. And I know Francesco handled a lot of um, the James the James Junior story, right? And then yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Francesco did did well. They were they just started it as backups actually, right? And, um, and uh, and then I, th- I think I think the comic lost some pages or something. Was it like you know, remember when comics got culled to twenty pages? Or yes. Or was there, 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 there was something. Go- there was something happened, and, and, and we couldn't carry on doing the backups after maybe three issues or something. So then Scott thought, well, okay, we know we'll do you know, say three issues of me, and then two of Francesco. And, I see. And, and we'll do it, and, and, and we'll do it that way. But but you know the genius, you know the the, the you know the, the, the genius move. Is as you said earlier, you ran right about sort of part ten of eleven. You know the stories sort of merge and collide, and 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 you realise that that was you know that was the thing all along. Sure, and that was that, that was such a clever move. And Francesco did you know his his um his art on on the backouts. It was so you know because the because the backouts were more sort of personal and emotional, I guess, rather than the, the you know the main the main storylines were a little bit more sort of action. Uh, um, uh, I guess, and and but Francesca did such an amazing job, and then you know, and then for us to kind of collide, and I think I think on uh, on the last issue, or was it the issue before last? No, it was the last issue. You know, we we actually shared that issue, you know, and and, and did some pages each. So yeah, it was just a, you know, it was just a, again, it was just a really really cool time, and and, and you know, sort of um, fortuitous, you know. I do, and no, honestly, one of one of the best runs, and I even had friends who again were interested in comics but weren't regular readers. And they're like, yeah, I heard about that. It's a Dick Grayson story. And I'm like, you got to read this, man. And then I could hand it to friends. And they're like, oh, God, this was really good. And they and they were really surprised. And again, um, both you and, and Francesco, the art and stuff, they're like, man, I just don't remember seeing comics that look like this. And and I'm like, yeah, that's that's what's going on today is, is guys like you guys. I mean... <laughs> That, that's sorry. I was going to say that's really cool to hear because again, I think I said earlier, it's amazing that with 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 comics you can kind of have a distinctive style. You know, I mean, like like Will says, you know, that there, there is a there's lots of there's been lots of kind of house styles and things like that over the years, but actually you can just kind of you know have a kind of distinctive voice, I guess. You know, and there's you know guys today like you know like Sean Murphy or Francesco or sure. you know so, so many people that that you know that that. that they don't draw like anyone else. They, they draw like themselves, you know. And I think I, I, I love that in, in, uh, about comics. I love it that you can, uh, yeah, that you can do that. And maybe, maybe that does sort of remind me of, of even more like the 2008 years, you know, where you had just these amazing people doing doing their own stuff, you know. Absolutely. I want to talking about you and Francesco, and even actually uh, some of your scalp covers that you did over the years. Um, uh, you and Francesco, in particular, it seems the use of orange. Always uh, impresses me because I, I I don't know if it's because uh, coloring has advanced as much as it has, but it just seems like a lot of times 
the palettes that you and, and Francesco individually choose really makes your art pop in a way that it doesn't. And really looking through a lot of the cover images for, you know, from, from the art book and everything really made me realize, oh, you know, look at that. There's, there are these tones that sometimes I associate with Francesco. And, I, and I'm like, oh, look at that. Jack's doing these, this stuff too. So, yeah, talk, yeah, talk about your color choice. Well, um, well, with Scout, which uh, which Will did edit, by the way. So yes. We can, we can, we can, <laughs> we can, we'll get Will back in the conversation, um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I guess I guess you're you're right that the that coloring has advanced. You know, be, as as you know, technology has has advanced. You know, and Photoshop is such a powerful tool now. Um, and and with someone like Scout, for example, uh, you know, the sort of warm oranges was 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 a kind of. Yeah, you know, that maybe a kind of sure. I don't want to say an, an, an obvious choice, but it's definitely like a distinctive color that we can use for that kind of story setting. And, and yeah, and you know, and those those covers are a little bit more painterly for me as well. So and then actually, orange is a very sort of rich, you know, rich color. So uh, I probably did um, uh, have a bit of orange bias on, on those on those scalp <laughs> covers. I don't know. Will, do you remember? I actually think about it. I remember the, on that first cover, the first couple of sketches I sent like Dash. The, the main character was, you know, really saturated, like yellowy orange, you know, just as a kind of as a kind of tone yeah, there choice. Was a, so. There was a bunch of those, but then there were some pink ones too. You know, like oh yeah, deep reds. Choices, you know. That sure. I think that's probably what separates him from a lot of other artists is that, the, you know, the choices are bold. It's sort of the, you know, it's like he sends it in. A lot of times it'd be like, oh, I thought it might, be, you know, he might send you two choices, but there's one that's the obvious one, you know, and it's sort of, but it's the one that maybe he was not quite as, you know, like, oh, what do you think of this? Or is this going to work? Or, you know, like, you wouldn't send it in, like, ah, this is the one, like, print it, motherfucker, you know, like, so, (laughs) I mean, like, just like, I don't know, I think this is the way to go with it, but, you know, then he might have the version that, you know, 99% of the other guys might have sent in, you know, which looked perfectly fine, but it just didn't have that, like, you know, like the risk to it or the bite to it, you know? So, you know, I think there was a lot of that, you know, and it was always just, you know, whatever seemed to suit that. The, I think there's weird colors, weird thing. Cause it, I feel like I would go through stages where I'd look at my color cover wall, you know, I'd have all like three months in a row of covers up for every book. So, you know, you could have as many as 20 or 25 covers that you were looking at at any one time between printed and sketches and, you know, solicitation covers and it goes to these weird stages where you were just like, oh, everything's blue this month. Like, why did that happen? I don't know. You know, like, it was always a weird, like, we'd always were commenting on it. Like, you know, my assistants over the years, you'd sit there and look at the cover wall where you were chatting, meeting or whatever. And it'd be like, wow, everything is really orange and pink this month, you know. And then next <laughs> month, everything would be blue or it'd all be black and white with, like, a dash of color. Like, I don't know. It's just, who the hell knows? But it's that weird you know, sometimes you would just go through these phases where, or you'd see all the vertigo covers and five out of six, you know, five out of 10 would, would sort of have a similar palette, you know, uh-huh. uh, who the hell knows? I don't know. You know, I mean, it's a lot, maybe now it's easier to explain because people see what other people are doing. And you know, some of these guys are like vomiting out this stuff all day long. So you can <laughs> see whatever the hell they're doing all day long. But you know, it was just like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it, there's, there's weird, it's definitely a thing that would happen a lot that we would comment on, like on the editorial side, that things would start to sort of go in these weird waves, you know. But it's true. Even my wife's an interior designer, and there's, it's true every year. There's like a color that that's the color, you know, or it's fashion or whatever, you know. It's just that's the, you know, this is the color. And I think companies like Pantone and like paint companies, like they by the end of the year, like essentially they have awards for like this was the color of the year and it's some, you know, funny purple color or some mulberry color, whatever the heck it is, some kind of sap. Chartreuse. You know, I don't know. It's funny. I, color, I'm kind of, it's definitely a d- much deeper, deeper discussion than, than, uh, you know, I'm, I have the vocabulary for, but. You know, so. I'm glad you said that because honestly, People are like, why don't you talk to Lauren Martin? And why don't you talk to some of these other wonderful colorists? And it's like, because I don't have the vocabulary to have a, a really good conversation. And I would say the same thing for lettering. Uh, you know, mostly I let like a, a Chris Eliopoulos come on and say, all right, you tell me what you're doing. Because I don't even know how to begin to ask you what you're doing. Uh, so, yeah, and coloring. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I was like <laughs> over my head. I was like definitely in the deep end most of the time. I was, I was sort of. It was like a feel thing, you know? Like, I didn't, 
for me it was always just like a feel thing you know like I just felt yeah, like okay, sure. that feels like the way to go you know I don't I don't know why it does but it it does you know so yeah, yeah that, 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 that's the thing I mean there are definitely you know there are kind of rules and there's color theory and various colors you know you know uh, suggest different emotions and there are all those kind of things but actually at the end of the day it's entirely subjective color you know it's like you know like Will says is like do you, do do you like it or do you not like it do you respond to it or do you not respond to it and uh, that that's that's what I go for when I'm when I'm working I, I literally have no idea what I'm doing when I'm starting a cover and I, and I just kind of like you know just you know find it along the way and sometimes you find it a really interesting way and other times it's a bit more hard, it's harder work to try and kind of pull it together and to try and you know get get something out of the image but um yeah, the, 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 there aren't really any. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very conscious of it. I guess what I'm saying, you know, if you're asking like what my approach is, is, is I don't. I, I, as even as the years go by, I, I kind of try and think less and less about it, and just think about. Uh, sort of, funny enough, what Will says, like how, how I feel about it, really. You know, how, how you know what, you know, what's my net? How, how do I respond to it, kind of thing? And that, that's you know, where those, where then the choices come from. I've got no idea. If you, if you can help me with that and get some colorists on. They can let me know how, where, 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 yeah. why, but, uh, why that stuff goes that way. In, and, the, yeah. to, in the book, you know, definitely in the book. Like, I mean, it, it's interesting to flip through the whole book and see, you know, that sort of like the the, the trends that you have or the choices that you make, mm-hmm. or even you know the artists that you've admired over the years, you know, and the painters. Some of that I think must come from more of like a painterly approach to that. Yeah. It's just sort of you know you're not technically approaching it quite the same way as other people that it really is this sort of thing and I've watched you do drawings and do drawings of paper and stuff and uh, you know I don't know it's, it is endlessly fascinating to see why you know how artists work or how you know how you work how it just comes out or you can see it on the page and it's like I can't see it and like most people can't see it but like you can sit there and sort of see it and it's like I can see you doing it and I can see that you can kind of see it even though it's necessarily not there yet I mean, I'm always fascinated by the way artists like draw where it's like, I would just draw, like I would start at the point of Batman's head and then I would draw down and I would across and I'd go back up the next point, you know, like I'm always interested to see artists when they're drawing and it's like, you know, whether it's you or Jim Lee or whoever, and it's like, you know, I'll do a little here and then I'm down in the lower left hand corner and then I turn the page sideways and I'm doing like, I'm always like, how in the hell are they doing that? You know, that there's no, like, I think an average person draws it the way you'd write it almost like where you know you start and up or left and you just go across and do it you know but that's like to see you guys actually work and stuff it, it's sort of endlessly fascinating you know, flip the paper over and turn it upside down and you know like a little here a little there like it's very frenetic and kind of all over the place you know and then yeah but you know it ends up coming out and then it gets to a certain point where you're like well i would stop here but then you keep going you know or i would keep going and you stop and it's like You still there, guys? Oh yeah, uh, uh, you just yeah, you breaking up actually? Yeah, you dropped out for a second, Will. No, I just said it's an amazing to watch that you know process, like the actual drawing process, because it's I can appreciate it, but I have no, I don't, I don't have this ability to do it, you know, like sure. it's a completely foreign thing, you know. So anyway, for whatever that's worth. No, it's yeah, cool. So we, I mean, coming back to the book, I guess is just that you know we tried to capture some of that in, in, in there, you know, whether oh, yeah. it's between the art that was selected or some of the descriptions or the interviews, whatever it is, like just, you know, I mean, Mike Mulch did a great job of, there's a lot of process talk and that kind of stuff, and even if it doesn't always land, you know, in terms of, oh, this is why I did this, I think, you know, for a person who might be an aspiring artist or a person who just wonders how the hell this stuff gets done, you know, like it, I mean, hopefully there's stuff in there that people will find you know, somewhat helpful or interesting. Or, Absolutely. You know, looking or whatever, you know. Oh, definitely. And that's the thing. I, I kind of don't want to... I'm glad you're saying this stuff because I don't want the interview to, you know, oh, well, I heard the interview. I don't need to buy the book. No, and I'm really glad, like, for instance, you're talking about the pro- both the physical uh, process stuff that you have in the book and also, yeah, that, that a lot of what you include in the interviews and stuff kind of explains you know some of some of Jack's choices and everything. And again, yeah, no, the art speaks for itself in terms of you know backing up what you guys talk about as far as process goes. So no, that's this is what's inspiring all these you know a lot of these questions and stuff. So 
Awesome. Cool. <laughs> well, and um, and you got you got. I just got a couple more things. If you guys are cool for time, are we, are we okay? I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, fine. All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> so, tell me about writing and drawing uh, Savage Wolverine. Oh wow! Well, uh, yeah, um, yeah. That that kind of came out of the blue, actually. Um, I mean, you know, literally the first bit of dialogue I, I ever wrote was in a Marvel Wolverine comic. So I would say that, uh, you know, on, on reflection, you know, um, uh, uh, I, I would love to do more, you know. Um, it was, it, it, what, the, do you know what, the most, in, the, the, the thing about it is, is, um, is uh, normally I, I have a, a sort of, you know, uh, an amount of angst about, about what I'm working on. Maybe let's say it's sort of like twenty percent angst if I'm doing a cover or a post or whatever. You know, there's always a part of me that's sort of self-doubting and wondering if this could be better and, and you know, blah blah blah. And when I worked on Savage Wolverine, all, all that angst what went on the writing and the drawing was just a total breeze. It was amazing. <laughs> it, it was. It was. Uh, it, it was uh, yeah. I, I, you know, um, just just a, a, a pleasure to draw. Um, but yeah, you know, it's something that, that I've, I've always uh, wanted to do is, is write and draw. So a lot of my favourite guys, you know, write and draw their own stories. And you know, again, going back to the thing of comics having a kind of purer uh, uh, voice. You know, obviously, if you're writing and drawing, that's that's you know that you're getting a pretty, you know, you're sort of mainlining the the, the creator really there. And and so it's something that, that, that I'd love to do more of. Basically, um, you know, I've. I've uh, you know, it, it was great to get that opportunity, but it, but it literally just kind of scratched the surface. Sure. Well, and I was wondering, yeah, well, it sounds like it was a good experience then, and you do want to do more. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd love to. I mean, like I say, you know, it was a, it was a steep learning curve to be to be honest. Sure. Um, writing wise, but you know, but that's fine. That's 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 that's, that's how it goes. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's great. I worked with uh, Janine Schaefer over at, over at, over at Marvel and. Um, who was massively helpful and, and was very sort of supportive of kind of what I wanted to do. Because again, you know, it, she sort of said, you, you know, you've literally got, you can do whatever you want and then drop the mic and go. And it was like, that, <laughs> that's quite an attractive prospect. So I sort of pit, pitched this kind of, you know, weird, sort of almost like a heavy metal kind of European yes. science fiction, f- futuristic story, you know, with, with Wolverine. And, and she was just like, yep, yeah, go for it. So, uh, yeah, it, it was really great. No, it's always cool to see him outside of a, uh what would be a conventional environment for him and have putting him on another planet certainly help. So, yeah, it's, 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 you know, like I feel like some of the, some of the concepts that I have, like, I, I just didn't have the right chops to, to, to put them down properly. Like the, the you know, the whole, the whole thing of second future, the idea came from, um, you know, like Wolverine regenerates, right. You know, sure. he, he can uh, he essentially never die. So, right. so, 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 so if you put him, let's say, literally like a million years in the future you know, all, the, all, all the other humans would have evolved to some degree around him you know, I don't know what we're going to look like in a million years or whether we're even still going to be here but let's say we are like all, all the humans are going to have evolved but he's still this small hairy aggressive <laughs> thing you know like he, he's, he, he's literally going to be the most you know he's already an outsider and, but if you put him in, in that environment he's literally going to be the most kind of you know kind of uh, um just singular, different, weird creature, you know, the, 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 the already is. So, so, so that, that was the concept, but, um, I mean, you know, I, I didn't really, I, yeah, I, I didn't really, really touch on that enough. But, but the one thing that I wanted to do was actually kind of go back, um, it, it feels like the story I did was like uh, Act One, you know, and, and Act Two was going to be they go to Earth, and that's when you know we, we find out where 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 the, where you know the human race has got to, you know. Fantastic. So, yeah, so you know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, no, it, it was good fun, like I say, and, and, and a really good opportunity, and it's something I'd like to do more of for sure. That's cool. And uh, well, tell me about going back to witches now. Or, yeah, so, were you? Um, and forgive me because I, I forget. It's been a, you know, I I read a ton of comics. Did you do sure. the, Did you do the first Dark with Scott as well? The, you, this is go on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. 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 So, man, first of all, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to because I did talk to Scott about uh, the first Dark and everything, and. Uh, you know, again, another panel that came up over Cincy Comic Con weekend was a horror panel. How do you handle uh, horror from an art standpoint? An art standpoint when a lot of times it's sound. It's you know, there is so yeah. much you can do with all the senses in a film or in television. Radio seems to be able to do it with sound. When it's silent, yeah. tell me about you know what choices you need to make to have an effective moment of horror. 
Well, there was, there's two things going on there, really, because to, to other, I'm a big fan of horror movies, for starters. So when when Scott, you know, suggested a pure horror comic, I was kind of nervous because because there's nothing worse than badly done horror. <laughs> you know, it's, right. You know, you, you know, it's like if it, if if it's a horror movie, but it's not horrific. You've you've so missed. You know, you've just mm-hmm. missed. You, you know, the whole the whole. You know, you've really misfired sure and so when so, so when Scott told me about it I was kind of nervous but um, and, and you're right it is it, it's very hard to do in a comic because because uh, it, in, in a movie you know the, the, the movie has has the has the, the viewer you know you know the, the, the movie dictates what speed they're seeing through right that they're seeing things you know the pace that things are happening the sound as you say with a comic anyone can can put it down and you know look out the window or turn the page <laughs> or, or, or you know they you know they can literally do anything else so they control so, the pace yeah absolutely yeah yes yeah, so, 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 so how, how do you make that you know into a kind of a creepy you know experience like a sort of a, a horrifying experience and you know uh, but i mean scott, again scott is such a great writer i i, I had faith and and you know art, art wise you know, i think i i i sort of again didn't think about it too much i, I tried to just um uh, respond to what uh, scott was writing and that you know there's some you know we, you can do some weird angles and you know and shadows eerie shadows that don't quite you know they don't quite follow the the, the, the rules as it were like when when, when there's when there's a eerie sequence you can just play around with light you know in a, in a different way and things like that so there were things that I was trying but um uh, but one of the nicest things is that a lot of people said that it genuinely scared them and like that's amazing you know that that is that is, that is so uh, such a you know considering from going in and being nervous about about that very thing whether we'd be able to do that you know the fact that that some people found it scary is is, is great so uh, yeah but you know again scott's you know he's he's, he's so good and, and the, the the setting obviously the woods and the, the trees were you know lends itself to, to some creepy stuff and then and then matt hollingsworth came in with this you know just crazy coloring which you know we, we had kind of two or three back and forths of, of, of sample pages he'd send me some some colors and you know and, and they look really good i mean he's obviously you know he's one of the best in the world and but they were kind of quite regular and i said you know what i just want i don't know just something a little bit off kilter something maybe there's like one strong color that pops you know in scenes or maybe there's you know you know i, I was just trying to push him into trying to just just to get something a little bit more unique and then i think probably he was probably fed up with me by this point and just sent me this page with all these kind of kind of kind of spatters and and color and and, and it was just like you know i mean it, it's extreme but i was just like i don't know what what you've done there but like that is is doing exactly what you know what i was trying to get at. it's it's unique it's kind of interesting and different and you know it, it, it seems to polarize people the coloring and i've spoken to so many people that that absolutely love it and i've spoken to some people as well who kind of you know they say that it's kind of visually a bit sort of um, uh, kind of uh, uh, throws them off kilter, but but that's sort of what what I like about it is that you know it makes some of the panels kind of when we're in the woods and in the, you know in the tree sequence, and it makes some of the panels it's almost kind of you know hard to read and stuff, which which kind of adds to the the viewer hopefully not being not sure what they're looking at, you know, and, and sure. then, you know, and, and if we've got a witch, so witches around the corner creeping up on you, that, that that's quite an effective tool. So, yeah, so it's, it's a combination really, and, and yeah, Matt's colours are, are, are a massive part of the kind of the visual, the visual look to it, which, which you know, ended up kind of, you know, you know, making the book work, I guess, or that, not work for some people, I don't know. <laughs> keeps people off balance. No, I get it, and I think that's, again, yeah. I, well, you know, I like... I like challenging comics. I like a comic well, that me too. you know, yeah, that and it should it should challenge you, and you should spend as much time with it as as it, it needs to be. And especially, I mean, the great thing is, you guys, when you do create your own stuff, you're mindful to keep the price down. But that's the thing. I mean, as as Marvel and DC flirt with four ninety nine for twenty pages, it's like, well, this fucker better be like really special. Because, and I mean, you know, really, I mean, hey, let's be honest, I'll start Batman at five bucks a, a pop. And, you know, it's like, okay, I mean, you know, that's, you guys are setting the price. And certainly Batman is is an easy gamble. But I think, you know, with, with image books and stuff, um, I love the back matter that, that a lot of uh, the teams are putting in. And, uh, and I just think, too, that, yeah, the story itself should be challenging. It's something you want to spend time with. Sure, yeah. And, and as a point with the price thing as well, you know, we, yeah, we, 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 
yeah, we did it for two ninety nine for like yeah. Really 30, well, it was, it was thirty pages of story and 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 the trade at nine ninety nine as well. Absolutely. You know, we, we we had lots of back and forth about that, but we just wanted to try and you know get it in people's hands, you know, because because like you know it's, it's essentially an uh, you know it's the equivalent of like an independent horror movie. It's like that's not everyone's cup of tea kind of thing, you know. So we so anything we can do just to make it more accessible and to make people think, well, do you know what? I'll I'll, I'll give, this, give this a go. We kind of went for you know so um. So you know, so the so then to, to get the response, I mean, you know, the sales for number one as well were were, were, were crazy. I think it was like a hundred thousand or something. Which, again, for a, for a little weird horror, dark horror comic, that that that's you know that that was amazing. And and again, you know, one of the things I love about comics, you know, you can do something like that, and and, and it gets kind of you know, for want of a better word, kind of accepted. You know, people people are interested in it. And, you know, that, that's pretty amazing. Will are are you editing witches? <laughs> no, they're just. All right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Say it again. No. Yeah, no, I don't. No, I'm not editing it. I don't know. You guys have an editor on it. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, 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 on, on the first start, we had uh, David Brothers at uh, Image. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, okay. I do remember that. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I feel bad when I don't give guys credit, you know, for, yeah, doing that stuff. So, yeah, that's. Sorry about that, David. If you happen to be listening, I apologize because, no, it's cool. <laughs> it's good. Um, well, and also, um, something you guys get into. In the art book is uh, you doing conceptual art for films, sure. and yeah, yeah. Talk, talk about that difference. The only other artist I've ever talked about doing conceptual art was Tim Bradstreet when he did it back on uh, the uh, on the Punisher movie with Thomas Jane ten years ago. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, um, uh, yeah, I kind of fell into it by accident, really. I, 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 um, uh, Peter Berg what was who was the original. He wrote the first draft of the Losers movie, and he was originally going to be directing it. And, and, and we met him uh, when when he was working on that. And although he didn't end up directing it, we, we sort of stayed in touch. And, and the various films that he worked on after that, he, you know, I'd, I'd often do a, a bit of artwork for him because he, he really liked liked my stuff. Luckily enough, um, so sure. Hancock had a, a poster for him, and, and he actually. It, it was yeah. I, I did this kind of this fly poster for Hancock, and uh, which they put up around like New York and, and LA. And, and I woke up one Sunday morning to like a, a message on my mobile phone, an email, and a text, all from Pete saying like "call me, call me" kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, and this is like New York Times. So it was they were all at like four a.m. And, <laughs> and I get up Sunday morning, and there's all this stuff from Pete. I'm like, well, what is this? And, and it just turns out that he's seen my posters around New York and. and, and and really loved them, but but I'd heard that he was working on uh, Dune, you know, uh, Frank Herbert's adaptation of Frank Herbert's novel Dune. Yes. Um, so so I just mentioned to him, oh, oh you know, are you, are you doing Dune? And he goes, yeah. Do you want to do some artwork for it? And I was like, yes, I do. Yeah, that would be wow. amazing. Wow. So um, uh, I ended up doing six weeks on on Dune, uh, which you know, which was like more painted conceptual work, which is kind of closer to. To my, you know, how I started out really a more painterly kind of approach rather than more graphic kind of comic stuff, um, and then just as just as June was 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 finishing, the I said it's six weeks. I read online that the new Dread movie was was being sort of uh, a greenlit, you know, was in active production, and because of, because I just literally been painting concept imagery I did three images uh, of dread obviously I'm a big fan of dread I've worked on dread and yeah and uh, you know you know basically for fun and I, I put one of them online um, and I had two others online on like a directory online and, and io9 the website uh, found all three images and threw them up as a new story that they were official concepts art from the new Dread movie that was in production. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is really bad. <laughs> this is really bad. You know, and, 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 and then, you know, Ain't It Cool and Slash Film and, all, you know, it basically every movie site posted my, my images as official art from, from, the, from, from the movie. And I was, you know, again, yeah, this is, the, that's, 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 not, that's not good. And, then, and, and, and I got an email from one of the producers saying, can you call us please? And I was like, oh, oh no. no. seen my images uh, oh, well, well, one thing about one thing actually yeah, but all, all, all the news stories seemed very positive you know that they, they all seemed to really want a good dread movie because they didn't like their own version sure and 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 you know and they thought that, that my images represented you know you know, you know maybe a, a more promising sort of direction or whatever so 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 that's i was really good but i got this email and obviously i was kind of like you know 
dialing the number, kind of panicking, like, what's this guy going to say? You know, he, he's, here's my lawyer, we're suing you, whatever. But but no, you know, they, they, they had seen the images um, and didn't want to go up for a meeting uh, with, you know, to talk about maybe working on the actual film. So wow. that's... So that that's how it went, and then you know, and, and I've worked very closely with uh, the guys at DNA and Alex Alex Garland on on Dread, and then Alex called me when he was working on Ex Machina, and um, you know had had a, a, so six weeks of just uh, coming up with 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 Ava, you know, the robot from Ex Machina, yeah. just me and Alex working working together again before before the movie was greenlit or anything. It was just a kind of you know he he had this script and. and and would I be interested in trying to work out, you know, how this thing was going to look visually? So, uh, um, you know, and, and X Machina has gone on to quite rightfully, you know, be, be you know, really well received. Oh yeah. And, you know, it, it, it actually won an Oscar for visual effects, you know, which obviously Ava was a massive part of. So, um, yeah, you know, and 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 and, and I did Battleship as well with Pete again. Yes. Just finished on on uh, just finished on Star Wars Eight as well. So, so. Hey, wow, that's great, man. The the the. the you know, the, the, yeah, just throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> but like, no, but what I mean, but but it, but it's turned out though it wasn't deliberate as well as you know, alongside comics, you know, you're working on the movie stuff has has, has proven a big, you know, a, a big part of, of of my working life. So it's great. You know, I, I really like having the balance because it, it, it is a different, it's a different mentality and a different approach, but it can make you know makes you flex a slightly different muscles, I guess. Yeah, but um. Uh, I really enjoy doing both things. So yeah, yeah, I feel very lucky. Well, I'm glad they're in the Bart book as well because, uh, yeah, I I, I think uh, really interesting stuff. And again, yeah, you know, a different a different uh, example of your style in a different format. So uh, no, I you know the joke. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, please. You know, the, I was going to say we, you know, we, we try again with the book. You know, we, we try we. we you know, we sort of thought long and hard about what to include, so, and we've got like the comic section, we've got a poster section, which has uh, you know a ton of the Mondo posters that, that have basically never been republished because Mondo just do them as limited prints and then they're gone. Sure. And and and, 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 and then we do have the the movie section as well, which yeah, has X Mac and then a big section on X Mac, a big section on Dread and things. So yeah, we tried to put as, as, as much in there as we could. So ho- hopefully, uh, you know, it's um, of interest to someone. <laughs> no, I think so. A great, seriously, the book, the art book has turned out great. Is it, Will, is it out now? Is it, is it available now? Uh, it comes out on the 20th, so uh, next September week. 20th. Yeah, okay. Next week, yeah. Next um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was definitely a thrill for us. And, I mean, we were really lucky. We got, like, Jim Lee does the does the intro, and Peter Berg did the forward, and Scott did the afterward, and, you know, the companies were really generous with, like, giving us the permissions for stuff. I mean, guys, like, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention something like, you know, our, our good friend of ours, Jack Mahan, who works at DC Comics for years. He, yep. you know, he was instrumental in getting, like, the DC stuff. Because without the DC stuff, is DC is generally pretty reticent about, you know, giving stuff for this. Because they do their own books. And they Certainly. don't necessarily know what you're going to do with this stuff and whatever. And you know without that like we didn't really have a book so you know yeah. guys like that that really came through and but you know this is based on them you know long relationships and trusting us that we weren't gonna you know screw it up too badly and you know a lot of stuff i mean the guys at mondo um tim and justin eric and a bunch of those guys that you know all work there and yeah they've been terrific you know it's just been a completely like uh, you know, I don't know. There were different points when the book didn't seem like it was going to happen, and then it, it did happen, and then Insight kind of came in and said that they wanted to do it, and so it became this joint thing. So yeah, so the the regular book, or I should say regular, but the the, the, the mass market book comes out on Tuesday. Um, but Jack, you're going on a little mini tour, or yeah, around the UK signing tour, yeah. Yeah, the UK and Ireland. I'm going to London, Glasgow, uh, Manchester, Dublin, um, and then down to France as well. Not not for the book, but straight that weekend as well with uh, Urban Comics, who, who prints our stuff over in France. So it's like, um, yeah, like I was chatting to my friend uh, Lee Garber the other day, who's only I came over to San Diego with Lee this year, and he's only flown about five times, and I think I'm going to be flying more times in that week than he's kind of ever flown in his life. So. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's good though. But I mean, the, the, the response to the book has, has has been so good. Like, you know, normally I've got like a you know a Batman book to hide behind, or, or sure. you know, a witches or something, and this is kind of just me. So it's, it's so 
you know, I feel really grateful that that, um, that uh, people are, you know, seem to be really interested in it. And just on a personal note, as well, I just want to say that obviously it will has really been instrumental in, in, in so much to my career, and it's uh, I'm I'm so um, happy that that he's that he's written this book because uh, you know it, it, it means an awful lot to me that this book is out. So you know, and 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 like Will says, the relationships that we've we've had and, and uh, with with everyone with people, people guys at Mondo, I'm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud right now. Oh, I got a bit emotional there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Dude, you've made your mark, and I'm really excited that, you know, now it, it's time for an art of book of yours because uh, it was clearly easy to, to fill this stuff with uh, incredible images, amazing stories, great process pieces as well. So, no, your time your, your time came a long time ago, Jack. It's everyone's catching up with it now. As far as really, you know, like you said, you you hide behind good projects. No, 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 you make good projects, and and you're a huge part of why these projects are so good. So it's well deserving. When uh, I, I did just see you in San Diego, and Will, uh, when uh, and uh, not to rush you back to the states. But uh, it, was that it for uh, this year, as far as you being in uh, the states, or any uh, anything coming up that you? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be at MondoCon in, in Austin in, in, in October. Cool. Uh, yeah, the guys at Mon- the, yeah, the guys at Mondo started doing doing a show one show a year, and this is the third year, and um, uh, it's great. You know, I mean, those guys, you know, they're, they're, they're the best, and, and 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 the show reflects that as well. As you know, there's movie screenings and posters and you know amazing collectibles and toys and stuff it's 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 and austin's an amazing place so uh yeah i'm, I'm going for my third year there but beyond that that that's that's the only other show I, i've got this year okay man no worries and when does witches come back uh i'm speaking to scott in the morning literally tomorrow morning and, and he's and he's starting writing it so uh, okay so uh soon basically Excellent. very very soon like yeah i, I mean i mean the, the the delay is is my fault because i've i've had the uh, other projects and i've been sure. away from home working so um so uh yeah but we, we, you know we're literally starting it uh uh uh, uh, like you know, in the next few weeks, I'm going to start drawing it. So, Excellent. thank goodness because it's been a, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming. So, I'm really looking forward to working on it. Wonderful. And your issue of All Star Batman when when is that coming out? Uh, that's issue six, I think. Okay. So, um, you know, a couple uh, months, a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent, man. Well, again, uh, September 20th for the Art of Jock, and uh, certainly go to your uh, local comic stores if uh, to to catch up on any. Uh, great jock projects, whether it's The Losers or Savage Wolverine or uh, Green Arrow Year One, uh, some of these other wonderful things. And, the, I mean, well, like you said, I, I guess the Mondo posters, you'll have to see what's still in print and, and what's out of print. Uh, but, uh, no, great body of work and uh, a wonderful conversation, guys. I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, both of you continue. Thank you. Yeah, truly, continued success. I, uh, I hope you'll both come back because I enjoy talking to both of you. Uh, thanks, thanks you've man. always been really supportive of all the books all along so, and all the guys that we work with so thank you for that appreciate it